crossed over in one night. He put that into the computer. He put the amount of Jews, I believe he put two and a half billion Jews uh, uh, walking by foot, uh, uh, foot uh, if you will, traffic. And he put all that information in the computer. His question was, he wanted to know how wide a gap uh, when Moses stretched out that rod. That's why we still celebrate Passover today. Uh, we came out by a mighty hand. Uh, oh, come on, say amen. And the computer spit back the information uh, that when Moses stretched the rod out, uh, that the gap in the Red Sea had to at least be a mile and a half wide. Now, I'm going to tell you, that ought to excite you to excite her. That her was blown. Come on, say amen. See, we saw little pictures uh, of a wall up with about four or five weary people walking across. Uh, but I'm telling you, they came out with a mighty hand. They came out with victory. Come on, somebody give him praise. Right before they come out, they didn't only put blood over the doorposts of the house, but they roasted lamb. Come on, seven, that's what I'm doing tonight. I've roasted up some lamb for you. Come on, say amen. Now, when they got ready to dissect the lamb, and you that have studied the gifts of the Spirit know there are nine spiritual gifts. Three of the gifts make you think like God. Three of the gifts make you talk like God. And three of the gifts make you walk like God. When they got ready to come out of Egypt, what were the three parts of the lamb that they ate? They ate the head of the lamb. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. My God, I need somebody to help me in the house tonight. They ate the purity of the lamb. What's the purity? It's your belly. Out of the belly of the lamb shall flow rivers of living water. They ate the leg of the lamb. I'm going to walk in them. I'm going to talk in them. Honey, they came out of Egypt. It's filling you and I are going to go out of this church tonight full of lamb. Come on. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give praise to God. With all of that, what in the world happened? With all of that, now we, we, we studied the spies that went out to spy out the land. Twelve spies, full of faith. Oh, yeah, they was full of faith, all twelve of them. Ten of them had faith in the enemy. Ten of them had faith in the giants. Come on, say amen. It takes as much faith to be afraid of the devil is it does to serve God. These folks are serving the devil. They, they got faith in the devil they serve. Come on, say We think faith is a religious term. Come on, say amen. They went in and spied out the land. They saw the land flowed with milk and honey. The ten that gave the evil report saw the same thing as the two uh, that gave up the good report. Uh, what happened to them? They had faith in the gods of that land. They had faith in the people that were there. They were giants there, and they had faith in them. So when we look at what God gave Israel, how in the world did they get so messed up? And I believe it all lies in the verse of Scripture that I read to you. They begin to be attracted by the gods of the people that they associated with them. Turn with me if you have your Bible to the book of Ezra. I'm going to read a little bit out of the book of Ezra, the ninth chapter. Now, this is not really considered a Feast of Tabernacle celebration message, but I'm going to try to bring it out to you so you will understand why God's people got in trouble with all the promises of God placed in their life. In Ezra, the ninth chapter, let me read this to you. Now, when these things were done, the princess came to me. Now, you have to realize that in Ezra, the ninth chapter, they are in exile. They're in torment. They're in all kinds of trouble. 
See, if you don't know that the church world today, maybe not us that are in here tonight, but there's a whole lot of folks in the church that are in trouble. There's a whole lot of church people that are not receiving the benefit and the promises of Almighty God. Ezra, the ninth chapter, this is at a time when they are looking at destruction. They are looking at what has been destroyed. They are receiving not what God has promised them, but they are receiving the results, if you will, of their lifestyle that has not been pleasing to God. In Ezra 9, the Bible said that the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites, the reason that they were in this situation, verse 1, they had not separated themselves, say, separated themselves. They had not separated themselves from the people of the lands. They had went in the land, but they became like them. I, I need somebody to help me preach. They, they wanted to do the same dance that they did. They wanted to serve the same God they did. They wanted to have the same mess going on in their life as the people did. And because of that, they found themselves in trouble. They found themselves in exile. They found themselves in a jam. Can you say amen? All right. So in the same book of Ezra, uh, chapter 9, uh, it talks about the same, some of the same people that God told them that I read to you earlier out of Exodus uh, that God said he would take care of them with the enemies and those same enemies that God promised to take care of them are now plaguing them in the land that they're in. And if you'll read uh, Ezra the ninth chapter in verse 1, it talks about Jebusites, Amorites, Moabites, Egyptians and Amorites and all them ites, bites and mites. Come on, come and say amen. And when you realize something with me, that God has made them a promise, uh, but because they have yielded themselves, uh, they have found themselves into a small space. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to help somebody out here in a minute tonight because there is somebody listening to me tonight in this service that your world is turned on you. Uh, it seems like things are not working the way you know they're supposed to work, uh, but I'm here to declare that tonight is miracle night in the house of God is going to take you out with victory. If you believe that, give him praise. Look at verse 2, book of Ezra 9, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves, their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of the land. God said, I'm going to put you in the world, but you're not going to be of the world. I'm going to put you out there, and instead of them changing you, you're going to change them. But we find that ain't what happened. All right, let me go quickly. I've got to get somewhere. I've got a text I want to use. And they have taken of their daughters for themselves. Look down in verse 3 then. And when I heard this thing, here's what Ezra said. Ezra said, I read my garment and my mantle, and I plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and I sat down astonished. What, what began to happen? Ezra began to realize that they were not serving a bad God. They were not saying this was not a dream. This was brought about by the people's own bad decisions, their own bad decision to worship the gods of that land, to do what other people did, to become part of other people's mess. And you've got to be very careful. In verse 5, at the evening sacrifice, Ezra said, I rode up, uh, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord God. And said, oh my God, I am ashamed and I blush to lift up my face to me. I was watching Channel 12 News. Don't anybody get angry with me. I was watching Channel 12 News the other day and they were breaking what they called the news about what Virginia has just begun to allow in our state. And the newscasters did not blush when they told it. In fact, they laughed as if we had come to some great plateau. I'm here to tell you that if it continues like it's going, the church will have to rise up and shine in the midst of darkness come hell or high water. Can I get somebody to praise him? 
Israel said, I was ashamed. Israel said, I begin to blush. For our iniquities are increased <coughs> over our head, and our trespass is grown under heavens. Verse 7 says, In days of our father, we have been in great trespass unto this day. For our iniquities have we our kings and our priests have delivered unto the hands of the kings of the land to sword, to captivity, to spoil, and to confusion of face as it is this day. Here's the people that have been promised to be overcomers, but they find themselves being overcome. God has promised them he is going to make their enemies. The man of God talked about it the other night. Yeah, yeah. He is going to make their enemies flee from them. Yes. He is going to be an enemy to their enemies, but they have become so involved with the people that they have come in contact with that they have become like them. Here's what I want to preach because we all need to realize that God is opening up a door in our behalf. God is about to give you a space. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting a space. Uh, uh, there's a ray out of this and God's given me a space. Uh, in verse 8, let me read it to you. In verse 8, and now for a little space, peace has been shown from the Lord God. Come on. God said, I'm about to send a little grace into your space. I need somebody to help me preach. God said, I'm about to let you turn something around. Something's broke, but you're about to turn it around. Something's messed up, but you're about to straighten it up. Something's broke, but you're about to fix it. Come on. I, uh, somebody say, neighbor, I'm about to get a little grace in my space. I don't want to see you over the whole time. Let me, let me read it to you in the King James. And now for a little space, grace has been shown me. My God, tap somebody and say, I got some grace in my space. My neighborhood's on its way to hell, but I got grace in my space. My, my, the school system is going down, but I've got some grace in my space. I work it on the job, and everybody around me is healed, but I've got some grace in my, in my space. Come on.